my name is Marty Heisinga. I'm with ITS Partners. I'm the account executive that covers the Northeast region for ITS. I want to take some time to introduce the latest video series on Altiris Asset Management Suite 7.1. 7.1 is something that ITS were very excited about. There's a lot more benefits and it's, it's just a very solid product. The two engineers that are going to be talking about Asset Management Suite is going to be Stu Harris and Jonathan Jesse. Stu Harris is our asset team lead here, and then Jonathan Jesse is a practice principal. We're going to be uh, focusing on software and hardware procurement with asset, management, with asset management and software licensing compliance. If you have any questions, feel free to call us at the, the number below. Or if you want to email us, feel free to do that as well. Thank you. Hi, this is Stu Harris, the ITS Asset Management Team Lead. And I'm going to have a short video that's going to go over the basics of the procurement system in Altiris. And we're going to have a series of short videos between myself and Jonathan Jesse to discuss the procurement method and how it all ties in with the rest of asset management and software licensing compliance. And in this video, I'm just going to take a few minutes just to talk about the different pieces of the procurement system and kind of how they interrelate to each other. So on the procurement screen, I've jumped from home, service and asset management, down to the procurement screen, which is where I'm at right now. And if you notice, there's a quick start for procurement. We have a little bit of setup to do in the background, and I'm going to go over this setup for each of these in the next video. But I wanted to talk just briefly about each of these components and what they do for each other. So set up in the following order, we're gonna set up a stock room, a company, and a catalog. The stock room is just what it sounds like. It's a stock room, it's a place where you would store the items in your location that you're gonna purchase for your uh, IT environment. And in here you can see that I already have a few stock rooms set up. These are location based. So in order to use these, you'll need to have at least one location per stock room set up within Altiris. Then we'll set up companies for your vendors. These are going to be the companies that you would buy things from. For example, Microsoft, uh, CDW, Adobe, anybody that you'd be buying equipment from. You could even have Dell as a supplier. Then the next thing down would be a catalog. Catalog is, again, just what it sounds like. It's a place where users or procurement users in Altiris would be able to select their items from. So if you have a set list of software that you want people to choose, you can point them to a specific catalog. They'll be able to go into that catalog and then choose which software they want to purchase. That will then generate a purchase request. And then from there, if it's approved, it can generate a purchase order. Once the item is purchased, we can then receive it using a receiving slip. Receiving slip is not on the procurement quick start, but that's actually, it is over on the tree on the left. And that receiving slip will allow us to show that the item has been received and into which stock room. And in the case of software, if the software is purchased, if a license is purchased, this will also tie into software licensing compliance by generating a software purchase resource. And that software purchase resource is where a software license in the software licensing component will actually give us the number of licenses that we own. So those come from the purchase to the license. We're going to do another video down the line with a more detailed look into software licensing compliance. This is sort of the beginning of the train. That's sort of the, going to be the end of the train for our series of videos. So again, we're going to set up a stock room, location-based, requires locations, company, which is the vendor that you're going to buy things from, then the catalog. Inside the catalog, we have three different types of items. Consumable catalog items, which are items like a power strip or maybe a mouse or a keyboard. You don't really care about asset tagging this item. This is going to be something, it's a consumable. Yes, I have 10 power strips. Most, most companies aren't going to worry about their assets in that depth to have to asset tag every single power strip. Um, fixed cat asset catalog item 
is going to be something a little bit larger, like, for example, a monitor, a desktop computer, a laptop computer, anything that's of a little bit more of a significant value. And then there is a software catalog item. A software catalog item is a piece of software, for example, a license for Microsoft Office or a license for Adobe Acrobat Professional. Those are software catalog items. Those are the, the items that will actually generate a software purchase, again, to go towards our software licensing compliance. So this is just a brief overview of the different components. In the next video, I'm going to talk about actually creating these first three items, the stock room, the company, and the catalog. And then once we get those set up, we'll do another video creating each one of these, a consumable catalog item, fixed catalog item, and a software catalog item. And my coworker Jonathan Jesse is going to be doing some videos with the workflow component that's new to Asset Management version 7.1 that's going to take you through each of these pieces in a little bit different format. It's a little bit more user friendly and it can be even geared towards your end users where the end users can actually leverage these items that you've set up back, back, back behind the scenes for these different pieces. So again, in the next video, we'll actually set some of these up.